here I am again with my handy dandy whiteboard and almost always I think whenever you see the handy dandy whiteboard you know it's going to be intense. So first of all, welcome everybody that was here via Rich Lop, okay? And for those of you who don't know who Rich Lop is, R-I-C-H-L-O-P-P, -P, put it in YouTube, you need to go see this guy. And I don't have near as many people to tell as you do, Rich, but that's very, very sweet. He did a very sweet video about how I was instrumental in his path. And I was very honored to meet Rich, both online and in person. Uh, when I met him, it was so funny. He was like, his videos were dark and he was back in the corner. And um, I, I got to talking to him and he's one of those people that doesn't know how wise he is. He doesn't, he didn't know even at the time because he'd been through some pretty horrendous things, including an NDE. And he just didn't realize that he had connected with the other side and incorporated that. He didn't need to... Um, reach his higher self he had connected with it already he was already talking through his higher self he was connected to it always instantly all the time he just didn't know it so um yeah i spent a lot of time talking to him he was a very cool guy very cool cool guy now he has a site on youtube where he does tarot readings now as you all know i personally have collapsed all of the the uh horoscope stuff, but that doesn't mean it's not helpful to people. Uh, your body is still very much in tune with all that stuff. So like I've told you before, you need to talk to your body. If your body is still very much acting like uh, your uh, sign, then, then you need to respect that and you need to work with it. But what he does, because I watched what he does, he doesn't just do tarot readings. He starts with tarot readings and then he just connects just like I do. And he starts talking about stuff. Stuff that's way past tarot readings. Actually, what he does, whether he knows it or not, is what tarot readings were originally built for. As kind of a guide to lead you into all this other stuff. All this other knowingness. Now, they've kind of gotten very commercial now. So, you go get tarot cards, you read the book, and then you do tarot readings. And that's not the way the original ones were set up. They were just kind of, like I've told you guys, when you access knowledge on the other side, it's a giant computer, a huge computer that you can't even imagine. But the trick is, in order to get that knowledge through a human brain, you have to type in something in the Google search. So what tarot cards do is they allow you to, you know, reduce that search, so to speak. And that's what he does whenever he does that. So it's way, way past your average tarot reader. So if you're into that sort of thing, I absolutely suggest that he is absolutely the only tarot reader that I know that I would go to. Um, and I'm not saying there aren't other good tarot readers out there. That's not what I'm saying. I just don't know you. That's all. I'm saying the ones I know, which is a very short list, but he's the only one I would probably ever go to. But who knows? I might meet another one and change my mind. Every tarot reader that's doing it right, like he's doing it, I shouldn't say that. There's nothing wrong with any way that any tarot reader is doing it. But if you want to connect with that knowledge from way outside of here, uh, the way tarots were richly meant to be, um, every single one is going to do it a different way. Uh, so you're going to get cool things from everybody. Uh, it's just that I'm just like really, uh, I really, really mesh with what he says and how he connects. So I don't know if you think the same or what, but who cares? All right, so there's that. Thank you very much, Rich. That was very sweet. Welcome everybody who's here from Rich's site. I look forward to talking to you in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, surprising. A lot of people, like 300 people overnight new subscribers and I don't have very many subscribers so 300 is huge oh by the way I passed 2,000 and you guys that have been with me for three years you know what a big deal it was whenever I had 50 2,000 is almost mind-boggling so welcome everybody I'm surprised every single one of you is here listening to this <laughs> okay now this video is going to follow the last video 
So if you don't watch the last video, you're probably not going to understand this one. So I would encourage you to watch my very last video that I did. And now I don't remember the name of it because I never watch my videos once I put them up. Well, no, I never watch them ever. I just do them and put them up and move on to the next subject. Too many subjects, not enough time. So let's go on from where we were in the last video. Now, before I do that, because I am going to get, I know I already am going to get this. Unless I can see, hear, feel, touch, or smell it, it doesn't exist. So let's just talk about that for a minute before we get on to what I'm going to talk about over here. Why don't you put your hands in front of your face like this. All right, look at that space. I mean, space in between your hands. What's there? You're going to say nothing, or you should say nothing. Probably will say nothing. But that's not exactly true, is it? Because if I were to tell you to do the same thing up in a 747 jet, as high as it will go, and now I want them to take all the oxygen out that they're giving you, now I want you to put your hands between, and I want, to, I want you to tell me what's there. Okay? And you won't be able to hold your hands like this because you'll be dying because you won't have enough oxygen. So clearly there's a difference in this space. Something that you can't hear, smell, taste, see, or feel, right? And it's called oxygen. You know it exists because when you're up without it, very, very high, you die. Now, don't tell me that you feel it because you're dying. No, your body is responding to not having oxygen. You're feeling your body's lack of oxygen. You're not feeling the oxygen itself. Otherwise, you could feel it like this. And you'd feel it better down here because there'd be more of it. All right? But you're not. You can't feel here, tape. you can't, you know? But there's oxygen and much, much more in between your hands, right? Okay, now let's do this again. Now you're gonna hold your hands in the middle of New York City and uh, nothing's there, right? However, you can get on your phone, you can get on the internet, everything works really, really fast there. Now I was born in Wyoming, USA. And for those of you who don't know, it's a very desolate country over there. And if you go to the west side, you're in the Rockies. And if you get in the Rockies, way deep into the Rockies, let's go where we'll wander through Glacier Park and up into Yosemite and into Yellowstone. There are places there that you not only can't get the internet, but you couldn't get a phone. There are places up there you can't get electricity. Unless you bring in a generator and a solar system, wind generator. Okay? Now, if you put your hands like this in New York City, and you put your hands like this in the middle of the Rockies, is there anything different that you can see? Of course not. But there's clearly a difference. Because you can access electronic devices in one place and you can't the other. Therefore, it implies, number one, there's oxygen in the air that changes. And you can't see it at all. So that means that there is something in the air in front of you that you don't know anything about. You walk through it all day long. Don't think anything about it. Right? doesn't interfere with your life, your day. Oxygen is molecular. Waves flow. And this doesn't bother you, not in the slightest. Now take that information. And now we're going to expand it. And I want you to expand your perspective. Expand your perspective. We're going to go back to frequencies. Now here on Earth. There's Earth. Down here. Very limited frequency ability, ability to translate frequencies. Very, very limited. For most humans, it's five senses. And for anyone who went to any science class in their life, they know that the five human senses are some of the weakest senses of any animal, and we are animals, on this planet. What do you suppose that is? That's very much on purpose. It was designed that way because that means you've got to focus on those five senses and nothing else. And you really got to pay attention in order to walk, talk, and, and just operate as a human being on this planet. Therefore, that rules out all these other frequencies out here to interfere with you and remind you of the God that you are, which would interfere with your game, most people's game to come here, to come here, forget you're a God, and have these experiences, okay? 
So now you know why humans have limited senses. They have limited, very, very, very limited abilities to sense other frequencies. They're even very limited with the machines that they make because those are built off what they know. And so there are very, very few of them. They see ultraviolet light, a range of radio waves, a range of microwaves, what else, a range of light waves, but that's it. And what was that? How many was there that they've got? Maybe five? So you got five human senses and five waveforms that you can identify. And you see a partial range on with the machines that you've got. That's all you got. Now, what do you think the chances are that maybe you're missing something? That maybe, just maybe, back in the day when people were looking up at the stars going, wow, what pretty lights in the sky. And then we built, I think I've already said this, then we built a... Uh, let's see, a telescope, and they got closer and went, whoa, those aren't just lights in the skies. Those are, like, really magnificent. Then we got bigger telescopes, and we were like, oh, my goodness, look, we've got actual, these are, these are planets, these are bigger than where we are living. And then we got bigger, and oh, my gosh, we've got uh, solar systems and galaxies and, and the Milky Way, and oh, my goodness, would it surprise you that much? That if I told you that you could build a bigger telescope, that you would find that the universe as you know it, this whole universe, if you pulled back far enough, would look like another galaxy and to someone else. The whole shebang, everything that you see, if you pull back enough, it becomes a galaxy looking thing. Would that be that big of a surprise? Shouldn't be. Now, in their process of getting to third dimension, third dimension had to feel alone and lost and hopeless to get to those deep, dark, despair, anger, fear vibrations that created the third dimension. You're not going to get there if you know that there's a whole bunch of beings up here that can save your buff. So it was decided after many, many tries that the vibrations that a human being could contact or sense or see or in any way know about would be so low that they would not be able to identify any other beings out here, any other life forms out here. And that was done on purpose. Okay? Now, it isn't that there hasn't been a great deal of energy sent out to the universe saying, can I, see, can I please, I believe in aliens, I want contact with aliens. There's been a great deal of energy in a very positive way. And that has been responded to over and over and over and over again. Yeah, over and over and over again. And the people have the experience. These are people that are military people, police people, regular people. All kinds of people have had experiences with aliens. And no one believes them. And when they have come close enough to a group of people, usually they've been shot down and hurt. Okay? So it's kind of a lie. I just watched a show last night called Cosmos on Amazon, which I probably will cancel soon. But for now, I'll give them a few more. I'll give them another week before I cut them off vibrationally. But I was watching Cosmos. It's a nice little show. But these guys are absolutely spending the whole show wanting to connect to aliens, interact with them in any way, like that's never been done before. And they're doing it like it's never happened. First contact, I'm going, you have first contacted so many times, millions of times you have first contacted, millions of times. Just people don't believe it. They just don't believe it. They call the people crazy. Just like me. Call me crazy too. So, when a, a, a group of beings come down and they, and, they, and they make themselves known to one or two people and nothing happens, or a bigger group but still small and they freak out and shoot you down and kill you, you don't have a really big tendency to take your big ship and land on the White House lawn. Because they are watching. They know how humans react and they don't really want to be bombed. They really don't, most of them. And the ones that do want, are, are willing to risk it are vibrating so closely to Earth that they are in danger of that. 
If they stay up higher and in the higher vibrations, you can't see them, but they're not in danger. So they can watch you all day long. And they do. Not even bothering you. They just watch. Lots of people watch. Lots of entities watch. Okay. So this is what's been in the past. Now the earth is raising in vibration and those humans that want to raise with it. And I was talking to a very good friend of mine. I love her to death. Uh, yesterday and she was talking to me and she said, I don't know what's wrong with me. Everything feels wonderful. Everything is going great. I, I don't understand. How can this be all going wrong? But I feel great. And she is the prime example and I'm not surprised. Uh, there are specifically two, three people that I'm not surprised that they are feeling and doing better. Uh, one of them is a master of, of manifestation and she is manifesting about as fast as she can think it. I think she's got maybe a 30 second, two minute window to manifesting. Um, she's having so much fun with it. The other one that I was just talking about, she's just, she's my age. I swear the woman's feet never touch the ground. She dances everywhere and literally she does not know how to walk. She only knows how to dance from place to place. And even though it is walking, it looks very much like she's dancing. And uh, she's the one that is just feeling great. And I tried to explain to her, Remember all those years that you star seeds have been on the planet, you've been miserable, right? And you didn't know why, you just felt miserable. Okay, now the, the planet is raising and now it's matching you. Whether you allow yourself to feel it, if you feel it, you will feel much, much better. But at the same time, all those other people that all your life have been flitting around the planet feeling wonderful, and you didn't understand now, now they all feel miserable. Because now they're on a vibration that does not pay, match the planet that they stand on. And they are not moving. They're just throwing a fit. They're doubling down. They're just getting more and more angry and eventually they'll NPC out. That's the way it works. They can either raise or leave. It doesn't matter at this point. Guy is done babying anybody. So for all you star seeds, if you aren't feeling wonderful, it's one of two reasons. Either you aren't doing the happier and happier thing that I've been trying to teach you for three years in over 600 videos, or your body is having trouble adjusting to these free, this very rapid frequency change. If, and probably both. You need to really work it happier and happier, and you really need to listen to your body. I cannot tell you how important that is. All the years, on what little I know about um, what little I know about uh, New Age stuff is I've heard a lot about people connecting uh, to Mother Earth and a lot I've heard connect to Source and a lot I've heard talk about connecting to uh, your higher self. And I think they're all wrong. Sorry, but I think they're all wrong. For a 3D, 4D trip, I think everybody has pretty much forgotten the most important thing that you should be connecting with, and that is the consciousness of the human body with all of its many issues. And it's been in 3D, guys. Your human body was there. It is now in 4D. It has been through the ringer and then some. If you need to connect to something, it is your bodies. Connect to your bodies. Now, I don't see anybody listening to their bodies. But you're in a human body. Everything that I've seen, like um, yoga, tai chi, um, you know, yoga, tai chi type stuff, that is actually originates at moving the energy through your body. It's not meant to be an exercise program. It was never meant to be an exercise program. It's all about energy. It always was. And it's been made into an exercise program. Totally bizarre. How you move through those poses cannot be led by a teacher, guys. This is your body saying, okay, I need to do this. It is just their examples, their guide. So you go through pose by pose, but you need, it's just to teach you to get in line so you can start moving where your body tells you, not where the teacher tells you. Bizarre. Bizarre. Totally bizarre. It won't work, by the way. It won't work that way. Oh, you might get in better shape, but you absolutely will not move the energies through your bodies correctly if you're bossing it around because you don't know what you're doing. You have no idea how to get your, your 
energies to run through your body. Even an energy worker doesn't know how. They, they know how to do it on somebody else. But it's almost impossible to self-do that whenever you're an energy worker because you're used to seeing other people. Very difficult to do yourself. You don't know how. The expert is already here. You guys just aren't turning it over to the expert. There's nobody that knows how to fix the body or move those energies better than one person. And that's your physical body. Yours. Not somebody else's. Not somebody else's rules and regulations. Your body will tell you what it needs to do. You need to learn to hear it. And that's way, way, way more important than connecting to source or higher self or even grounding to Gaia. None of those will help you if you haven't learned to talk to your body first. Talking to your body is the most important thing and it is being obvious now. Because if you're not listening to your body and doing what it needs to do as it goes rushing through all these frequency changes, then it's going to fail. And it's going to hurt. And it's going to make sure that you hear it. One way or the other. It will make sure that you hear it. You may not ever do what it says, but it'll make sure that you hear it. <laughs> I know, because I... am one of the worst at listening to my body. I know what I'm talking about. It is a struggle. I don't worry about talking to my higher self or source or Gaia. I have a terrible time talking to my physical self because I don't do physicality and I sure as heck don't do anything this dense. So it is very difficult for me to figure out how to communicate with this physical body. So I know what I'm talking about, guys. Do not, not talk to your body. It, the price you will pay is unbelievable and we're not going to go into my diagnoses because I don't need you guys feeding any energy to them. I will fix them. Um, but they are massive, they're a big deal across the board, and there are many of them. And so I'm telling you, don't do what I've done. I always tell you guys this, don't do what I've done. Learn from what I've got to say, and don't do it. Start listening to your bodies. Now, I made a pretty severe call for this timeline. I was tired of waiting around, so I knew this was going to be tough, whenever I called for it. I knew... Whenever I called, I want to be on the timelines where we move and move fast. I knew it was going to be dramatic. I didn't know it was going to be this dramatic on my body, but I don't care. It's worth it. I'll figure it out. I'll work it out. I know what to do happier and happier. And in the end, it will work. Okay, so now that we understand where humans are, after all of that preamble, I am finally going to get to the question of that I started years ago where I called out two different groups. I called them the pigeons and the geckos. And the reason why I use those names is simply because I don't want to give power to all those other entities that are in the fourth dimension. So I break them down into pigeons. This is Stephanie and me. Pigeons and geckos. And basically, every being in all of fourth dimension and really third dimension can be broken down into one of these two categories. These are the two sides of dualism. Okay? Everything here from the get-go, from the beginning of this creation, was started by dividing everything that is into two sides. That is what created dualism. Light, dark, good, bad as you use it with your human words. We don't, outside the game, by the way. For th those of you who are watching this now, instead of starting at the beginning, by the way, everybody that's new, let me give you a heads up. I kind of ramble, and I don't title things well. Um, I don't use YouTube well. I'm an instinctual person. I believe you should be too. So, you can do one of two things. You can click through my videos going from one to one that feels right to you, that feels like the one that you should watch. If you really are kind of an organized type person and you like reading a book from start to finish, you like school and you like to build on this, then this, then this, I highly suggest that you start at the beginning and watch my videos from the beginning to now rather than jumping around. So, it depends upon the kind of person that you are. 
which way you do it. But you will, what will happen is if, if you're watching a video and you have a question about something that's in another video, you'll probably get one of my long-term subscribers very nicely telling you where I talk about something else because they know that I don't ever watch my videos, I never go back, but they do. So they'll tell you where my answer is. If I feel like there's a whole bunch of questions and y'all can't find it, then I'll probably do another video saying it again. But I hate to repeat myself because I have, I do have access to everything, all information, and there's so much data out there. Um, really, the stuff that I've talked about for like a year and a half, other people say the same thing. I mean, Esther Hicks says basically happier and happier. So, you know, why do you need another person telling you to do the same thing? Lots of people have been saying that for a very long time. So, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's kind of happier and happier, wouldn't you say? Unless you're a uh, masochist, I'd say that's happier and happier. There's a lot of ways of saying that, really. Which cigarette is lit? Do I get taken off if I'm smoking cigarettes on YouTube, do you think? Here, let me rephrase that. I don't care. Oops, hold on. Drop my lighter. Yes, the one vice that I have. I am a cigarette smoker. Uh, don't drink, don't do drugs, and not even weed. Although I'm a big proponent of Marijuana, I think it is a magical plant, uh, as well as most other plants, but don't do uh, man-made stuff well at all, and I certainly don't do stuff that has poisons with it and stuff, and I don't drink alcohol either. Don't know why. I think I've got enough endorphins in my natural system that I none of that stuff works at all. And these are like little cigars. They don't have any of the additives. I can't smoke cigarettes that are like from stores. So I, they have additives in them. I can't do that either. It's got to be re just real tobacco and only just real tobacco. Um, oh, by the way, guys, I think I'm down to like eating like 100 calories a day, maybe. So, uh, which is one of the things I want to get rid of because I, I'm not dissing anybody that likes food. More power to you. I just don't. Uh, I don't like the cost. I don't like the, uh, having to fix it and clean it up and it's just time consuming for no reason. So it's just one of the things I want to get rid of is food. Uh, I don't have anything wrong with drinking stuff. I love water, but I, I just, I, for years, I mean, since I was like 10, I was like a proponent, can we just eat one pill and that'll give us all the nutrients we need for an entire 24 hours. That seemed logical to me. We should be able to do that. So, I'm slowly getting there. But I had to watch my body because I get to move it too fast and then it causes more problems. So, anyway, back to where... See, I told you guys, I ramble. Alright, back to pigeons and geckos. Alright. Now, there are pigeons and geckos all the way up. Okay? And there are different kinds of pigeons and geckos. And they're not all good, they're all not all bad. It's just like all humans aren't good or bad. They're both. They're everything and in everything in between that's true with pigeons and geckos but as a general rule the geckos that we have been dealing with on earth have been feeding off of they are draconian they are reptilian and much much more but those are the ones that you know about they also uh, use the grace but there's a lot more that you don't know about and certainly i don't think any human could stand in front of of a true draconian and not have and live to tell the tale I'd be shocked now I could because I know who they are but they're they're very 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 low energy and very 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 powerful I mean they run the reptilians that you've heard about they have been makes fun of the conspiracy theorists all those people okay the, the people that make fun of conspiracy theory people you know, that, that they're not really there and they don't really run people that run the world. Okay, whatever they think. But they're wrong. But that's 3D and it's kind of over. And I don't really want to talk about it. So, you know, if you want to do a session with me and pay me to talk to you about 3D, I'll be happy to do so. 
but since this is my YouTube channel, I don't want to talk about it, I'm not going to. Because every time I read something, I have to feel that vibration. And geckos, although I prefer them to 3D pigeons by far, it's still very, very dark. Very dark. <laughs> very, very dark. Pizzagate, human sacrifice, slaves, you name it, dark. So, I don't want to read it because it feels bad. And I'm doing happier and happier, so I'm not going to. But generally, that's not the only reptilians that are in the fourth dimension. That's just the 3D ones. That's the ones that are in those lower levels. Okay? All right? There are pigeons and geckos that raise in vibration. Thus, the me telling you that demons who are geckos, geckos, they're the gecko side, Save my soul. So, demons are up here. Angels are up here, but demons are the ones you're going to be shocked about. Who else? Um, who else is bad? Well, whoever you think is bad that you can't see, like bad gods and goddesses, like if you were a Christian, you might consider all the other gods and goddesses bad. Okay, they're all up here. And they're all up here above humans. So they're all happier than humans. Of course, they're higher vibration. And the higher vibration, no matter which side of duality you're on, the happier, more relieved you feel. Less density, higher up, closer to source, feel better. It's just kind of the rules. No matter which side you play on. Okay? As long as these two are split, as long as you're in this game... And you're split, you're not going to be completely happy because nobody is happy when half of you is gone. And that's how this game is built, which is why I don't like it personally. Is because out on the other side, in other games, you don't do that. That's very unique to this game, this splitting into duality. And then the lowering, adding linear time space, that's like a next level weirdness. So, but this ultimate starting point of splitting into a duality is very, very unique for this game. And very, very uncomfortable for me. But a lot of people love the contrast. They love to be able to split these two and note the contrast that is created when that happens. And I get that. Total respect given. It's just not my gig. I just don't feel good without being all of me can't do that here. You have to always um, choose a side. So I'm forever bouncing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Very, very, very quickly. In the, and that makes me feel close to being uh, one, all, me. Uh, and I don't look at things. I've kind of pretty much gotten rid of that whole good, bad thing. Not that I go out and do bad things so I can feel bad things. It's not like that. I'm talking about frequencies. I'm talking about vibrations here, not um, actions. I don't need to do things like humans do to have the frequency of it. I can clap the frequencies without saying they're good or bad and jump back and forth between them to get closer to what it's like on the other side and all of it is. Where we can play with all the toys at once. Yes. Okay. That reminds me of a Tinker Toy Lego thing I was talking to Colin about. I don't remember what that was, Colin. You need to remind me... Because I remember that was really good. Okay. Now let's go back to the pigeons and the geckos. Okay. The pigeons are what you would most of the time, if you were to look at them, you would consider them light. You would probably, from your human perspective, consider them the good guys. And you would probably consider the geckos dark and bad. Okay, so anybody that you think is, like, bad would go over here. Like all the gods and goddesses that are, um, I don't know, like maybe Hades and demons and stuff like that. And then over here you would consider this Jehovah. We're going to put Jehovah because there's too many gods. And you probably could put angels over here. And I don't know, um... Some people might put um, Athena over here. Who's the goddess of love? Well, I'm going to put Athena. Because I can't remember her. I 
think Athena is like a war goddess, so she might be over here for you guys. It depends on, you know, there's actually versions of those where people disagree. They're on both sides, by the way, just to really confuse things. <laughs> so, okay, so these guys all live up here, and most of them, these are, now, now most people will, they want to go who's higher and who's lower. Because in between, there's a billion, quadrillion, quadrillion different kinds of aliens. And I guarantee you, if you were to open up your mind and just draw something, just make up an alien civilization. Just make it up. I guarantee you it exists. Guaranteed. You cannot come up with an alien Civilization that does not exist. Every single one of them that I've ever seen exists. You can't do it. I guarantee you, you can't do it. There's too many of them. And in these alien groups, there are ones that are over here on one side. And there are those that are on this side. Now, as a general rule, and this is a general rule. This isn't every single gecko on this side, every single pigeon on this side. But as a general rule... Geckos are built on kind of like Americans. If you work hard, if you work hard and you beat out the other guy and take his job, then you get stars. Everybody loves you. Okay? The difference is that it, depending upon where you are in this, they don't care what you've got to do to do that. Like there are some gecko civilizations, alien civilizations, or even in what I would call the where the gods are, that there are rules. Like you can't do certain things in order to advance. And then there's other groups at the other end of the spectrum. Some of them have really strict rules of what you cannot do. Um, that keeps it almost to this edge of being the good guy side. And then there's the good guys. There's good guys over here towards good guys. And then there's a range all the way over here to the worst of the worst where anything goes. Where if you can get the guy's job ahead of you in any means possible, then that's okay. And this end is where the geckos that have been on Earth are from. They're from this end. Anything goes. Because they were not supposed to come to this planet anyway. They broke the rules. They were Everybody was supposed to leave Earth alone. But these guys broke the rules. And then these guys broke the rules. They said, okay, if they're going to break the rules, then we have a right to break the rules. And they came down over here. Only they weren't from that end. These guys were the pigeons that were barely on the good guy's side. And they came down to Earth too and started messing around. And then on Earth, the contrast between these almost bad pigeons and these really bad geckos down on the planet Earth is what created 3D. It was these guys' interference that actually made it able for Earth to actually successfully get to the third dimension. Without this interaction, Earth would have never gone that far. It really needed these guys to be on the planet to really push the issue and get it down into those deep, deep, deep vibrations. Because Gaia wasn't going to go there naturally. So this was all agreed on ultimately. But if you look at the picture in the history from their standpoint, the Galactic, Fed Galactic Federation, I think that's their name, they said nobody gets on that earth. And these guys both broke it. And once they broke it, eventually... Now, these are millions of years, but millions over millions of years, then there were all kinds of aliens that came down here. Millions upon millions of alien civilizations have been on this planet since the original two came down and did their thing, which is why it's so hilarious to watch people get all upset about the color of your skin. Because there are literally millions of aliens that have interfered with your genetic makeup to the tune of what you peripherally refer of as black, white, Asian, brown, whatever you want to say. Genetically, you would not believe what's going on. And you already know that your scientists 
can only see and identify a small part of what your genetic makeup is. We already know that. They admit it. They call the rest of it trash, I believe. It's not trash. It's the rest of the story. And if you saw the rest of the story, one of two things would happen. Either you humans would really move around on this planet and get to groups that are very, very unlike each other physically, but genetically, you're much, much more like each other. Or you would forget the whole thing and realize that we're all mutts. We're all mutts, and all of us have enslaved everyone else, every race. They still do. There's slavery going on around the planet in the United States as we speak by all colors, all times. It's been what the geckos brought down. Enslaved people, that's what they do. That's what they do. It doesn't matter what color you are. Civilizations across the board, all colors, have and will do it if they can get away with it. So it's not a point of what color your skin is, guys. What we need to end is that kind of thinking altogether. The slavery is not okay. Calling somebody different because of who they love or what color their skin is or what part of the world they're from or what sex they are or what sexual orientation they are, all of that is bullshit. Whether they smoke, whether they don't smoke, whether they wear a hat, whether they don't wear a hat, whether they've got red hair or black hair, straight hair, curly hair, all of that is these guys, these guys' game. And you guys are falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Which is fine, that's what created the third dimension. But if you want out of the third dimension, you gotta stop falling for the games. Seriously. You gotta stop falling for the games. And when it's more important to be out of this mess, and out of this dimension, then it is for you to be right about who did what to whom when. When it's more important to feel better than it is to be right, you'll get out. But that'll be totally up to you. But guys, leaving. You can go to an alternate earth. You won't even know the difference. I promise you. Okay? So, now, where are all these guys? Where are all these guys up in 3D? I have 4D. 4D is huge. And what y'all, y'all think linear with space-time, as do most of these beings. But they really aren't up above anything. Now, of course, if you talk to Jehovah or the angels uh, versus the demons, Je even Jehovah and angels believe they're higher than the demons. That's not true, of course. They're, it's really more sideways. It's a different frequency. They're on completely different frequencies. You got to put the right goggles on to see them, just like night vision or ultra light, ultraviolet vision. You have to put the goggles on and turn them to, okay, Jehovah vision, put them on as fine demon vision. It's more like a linear radio station that you got to tune to the demons and the Haiti, Hades and Jehovah and whatever. Okay? Now, the pigeons, on the other hand, pigeons are sneaky. The pigeons do not do their thing by the way the, the geckos do. The pigeons gig is that they almost always will have wise people in some area and they will convince you that their way is better and they're very soft, they're much softer, they're much gentler and they're very, very sneaky. Very, everything from very cultish to just, I mean, they've got it set up so that if you're in front of them, They've got all the answers, and they certainly look like it and feel like it. Very, very believable. Very much like Christianity. Very much like your basic religions nowadays. Very, very believable. And if you believe them, your life will get better or worse. If you believe them, you believe you can contact a demon, what are you doing? When you go through all those rituals or when a person does that, they're putting on the goggles and they're fine-tuning to find the demon. When you're praying to your God, whatever God it is, you're putting on the goggles and you're tuning to find that God and interacting with them. Same thing with the angels and all the other gods and goddesses. You could do the same thing with all the aliens, but you don't know enough about them to find them. You just say aliens. 
And then you've got this example of like tall, skinny white people. I mean, glowy people, not white, white people. By the way, I'm freckled. I am both, actually. I am brown, a little black, and white all together. So I'm not sure what group I belong in. Somebody needs to tell me what group I'm allowed in because, you know, I'm actually freckled. Do we have a freckled group where I'm supposed to be? We would actually, I think, be the, the biggest minority. Wouldn't freckled people be the most, um, the biggest minority? I think we should go with that. Being sarcastic here. Okay, back to this point. All right, so the pigeons are sneaky. The geckos are generally very bossy. And there's the two sides of up here. And how you get to any of them is to focus and be open-minded or focus or open up to anything. If you focus, you're going to find one of them. If you open up, you don't know who you're going to get. Okay? Does that explain who the pigeons and the geckos are? Right? Okay. So I think that I have covered the fourth dimension. If you guys want more information about the fourth dimension, Put a comment down below with your question, and I'll, if it's a quick answer, I'll just answer it in the comments. If it's going to be a bigger one, I'll do a video on it. How's that? All you new people, whenever you're watching my videos, be sure and read the comments, because there's some really interesting discussions in those, and for years I've answered them, and we've gone back and forth, so you get a lot of additional information by reading the comments, so I suggest strongly that you do that. Okay? All right, guys. That's it for me. I'm tired, and I'm going to actually smoke a cigarette that I finish and drink a Coke. If I drink a Coke, is that like breaking the rules? I'm so confused by the YouTube rules, although I think they're changing. Did you guys realize that up until Trump said something to them about deciding whether they're a platform or a, or a publisher a few days ago that these guys on my videos... They would demonetize me for like the first, oh, I don't know, a couple days, which is the majority of you guys. Most of you watch it. Like three, four hundred people would watch it in the first, I don't know, two, three days. And they would demonetize me through that and then kick in the monetization. And that's when it slows way down. So I basically, I think I've made a whole sum total. In it, oh, also, if you don't make $100 in a month, they take it. So you don't make anything. So the majority of the time, I've made absolutely no money with YouTube. And I really thought about just taking the advertisers off, but I have a lot of videos. So I don't know if there's a way to do it all at once, but I just leave it alone. If you guys don't want to watch the videos, I think you can skip. I mean, the advertisements, just skip them. Okay? Anyway, again, I ramble. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Love you guys, bunches and bunches. And hang on, this is going to be a great ride. I promise you it's going to end very, very well if you can stay on. Love you bunches. Bye now.